Hey everyone, how's it going? And welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be looking at how to simulate using just a shader, the illusion of water and rain droplets falling down on an object, which you can apply this to any material, any object you wanna to do to add this overlay of water kind of dripping down whenever material you've got. This is all gonna be procedural. There are no textures needed for this. So if you, as long as you've got Blender installed in any way, you'll be able to do this. Thanks so much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe. If you'd like to save five minutes of your life and skip the tutorial, there is a link to download this file and get the material through Gumroad in the description below. If you wanna head down there and help me out, that would be much appreciated. Otherwise, let's get into the video. So we've got our default scene here. We're gonna delete the cube, add a plane, scale it by five, just so we can see a bit better what we're doing. Rotate it on the X by 90 degrees so that we have a wall, because the, the rain is gonna be coming down the wall, hopefully and switch into material preview just so we can see what's going on with the texture. Now let's add a new material and call it something crazy like mm, rain. So our principled BSDF, this is just gonna be the texture that the wall is gonna be. Now this can be whatever you want. For example, just to demonstrate, I'm just gonna make this red for now so we can see a bit clearly what's going on. So we're gonna leave that for now actually. We're just gonna focus on making the raindrops and we'll connect that with the wall later. So we're gonna add a glossy BSDF shader, bring the roughness down to zero because we want it to be water and reflective and wet. Plug that into the surface, move that over a little bit. Now we're going to add a texture and a noise texture, which is gonna be our raindrops basically. Add a color ramp as well and a normal map. Now you're gonna to wanna to connect the factor from the noise texture to the color ramp and the color into the roughness move that over and also connect the color from the color ramp into the color of the normal map. And plug that normal into the normal of the glossy. Now here you've got a sort of camouflage looking texture. This is obviously nowhere near the raindrops that we're kind of aiming for. So let's bring the scale up on the noise and on the color ramp, what we're gonna do is actually flip the white and black around so that the smaller pattern is where the glossy shader is coming through because we want the raindrops to be reflective and smaller. And just playing around with the noise texture, this is kind of up to you on how you want your rain to look. If you want it to be a bit rougher, if you want it to be more cartoony and sort of perfectly round, uh, that's up to you. But I think that's kind of fine for now where you've got this sort of randomly sized raindrop. You don't want it to be all be perfect circles, but you want it to be pretty, pretty consistent with a bit of randomness in it because that's how life is. Now we're gonna press Control T on the noise texture to bring up a mapping node. And what we're gonna do is we need to animate this so that the water droplets are going from the top to the bottom. So on the Y value, what we're gonna do is if we move that, press right click and press insert keyframe on frame one, go right to the end of your timeline, which in my case is frame 250, which by default should be yours. Go to the Y value on the mapping node, type in something like 0.5, insert keyframe, and go back to the timeline, right click, interpolation mode and linear because we don't we want it to be moving at the same speed constantly and if we press play now you'll see there you go you've got this procedural seamless texture moving from top to bottom but it's just moving in a sort of flat straight line there's, there's no movement to it it's not warping or distorting so we're going to add a Musgrave texture and color and mix rgb connect the generated from the texture coordinate into the Musgrave texture vector generated into color two and the Musgrave texture height into color one, connect the mix node into the vector mapping. And you see this creates this super weird warped Musgrave texture image, which is way too much. So on the factor, we're gonna make it something like 0.99, which is really high, but we don't want it to have too much influence, just enough that now if you see if we play it, the noise texture later is warping around the, the Musgrave texture just slightly. So that you do get this sense of randomness that the rain is sort of running over and through these bumps on the, on the wall. It's not just going directly down. And you can play around the Musgrave texture as much as you want. Now if we go to the scale and the mapping node, bring the X, a, make it a lot bigger so that our noise texture is stretched so that we have longer streaks going down. We don't want them to be circles, we want them to be streaks of rain coming down. You can make this as much or as little as you want if you want it to be super thin. And you kind of, you're seeing the, the rough idea here of the sort of stretched rain, the noise texture warping over the, the Musgrave texture there and play around with the factor on that mix as much as you want to sort of add as much distortion as you want. 
play around with the color ramp as well to make the water droplets kind of as big or as small as you want. I'm going to make them a little bit smaller. And uh, there you go. There you go. You're getting the rough idea there. That's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. So that's the basics of the rain. Now, how do we add this on top of another texture? Well, what we're going to do is basically use the rain that we've created as a mask for itself. So it's only adding where the rain is on top of the other material, which in this case is our red principal BSDF. So let's add a mix shader, connect the glossy and the principal BSDF to that. And we're going to use our rain texture as the factor to mask itself on top. And luckily, we've already kind of done this. So what we're going to basically do here is duplicate this color ramp node so we have more control over the mask itself, plug the color ramp into the color ramp and then the output of that into the factor. Connect that all up and you should see now that there you go. The water, the reflectivity of the glossy is only where the rain is and everywhere else is the material that's underneath, which in this case is just the uh, the red principal BSDF that we've got. And you see the rain is sort of dripping down and we can use this secondary color ramp to change exactly how much of the opacity of the water is on top, which is completely separate to everything else, which is great. We get that little bit of control. If we want to blend the water on top, if we bring that scale up of the noise texture to like 150, so we get these tiny, tiny raindrops there. Maybe bring the detail change that a little bit as well and if we hit play again you go you've already seen this super reflective rain material coming wiping its way down looking really really good now actually let's just for the sake of this going to bring the specular down on the red so we can see the uh, reflectivity of the rain a bit better and that's it now just very quickly i'm just going to add a couple of image textures on to our principled shader so we can so I can just sort of demonstrate this in a more realistic setting if you were to put this on like a brick wall, for example. So we're just going to put a, uh, a normal texture in there and then an image image texture as well. It's all just sped up um, just so you can kind of see how this looks like on bricks. And there you go. Now, the problem here and what you probably want to do is if it's raining, you are going to want to increase the metallic value of your base material and bring the roughness down so that the wall actually looks wet because obviously if it's pouring with rain you're not going to want when it to be dry so rename this material from rain question marks to rain exclamation mark because it is indeed rain and there you go you see you've got this water kind of slipping and dripping down and really play around with the roughness on that secondary color ramp as well uh, you can play around with the opacity and really overlay that glossiness to it play around with the scale again with that musgrave texture if you want the water to be moving in a slightly more wavy fashion Play around dimension again at this point it's all up to you thanks so much for watching if you have any questions please let me know otherwise thanks so much for watching enjoy this video please give it a like and subscribe for more content like this i've been toby and i'll see you in the next video